Is app development dead? And will apps be replaced by chatbots? What's happening, softwarepreneurs? Welcome back to Swanage, the software innovation lab. If you're new here, my name is Dale Richards. I'm a software innovator from Salt Lake City, Utah, and I love making software that changes the world. I'm building a SaaS product from concept to cash, and I'm taking you with me for the ride. If you want to change the world, build apps, grow your SaaS business, and make money doing cool software entrepreneur-related stuff, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell. This question comes from Vinayak. Thank you very much, Vinayak, for writing a question on the channel. Uh, the question is, is app development dead in 2021? Because chatbots and virtual assistants are making their way. Importantly, people are losing their interest in searching and installing apps from app stores. So, sir, I want your opinion and thoughts on this. So, all right, great question, Vinayak. So there's look, lots of different assertions that you're making there in that question, and I think they all kind of merit reviewing one by one. So uh, one of the first things you said was, is app development dead in 2021? Uh, so we'll look at, at things like app usage, app downloads, uh, change over time, year over year in you know app downloads this year versus last year. And then we'll also take a quick look at chatbots and understanding if chatbots really are the future. So where is this notion coming from that app development is dead or that apps are dead? Well, we've got titles out there on YouTube saying, you know, apps are dead, or what's the future of apps, or the app gap. Uh, Patrick Hsu, an ex-Google tech lead on his channel, uh, Tech Lead, makes the case that apps are dead. He makes points like the app market is saturated and people only use the top 10 apps. But what he's really saying is that, is that as a distribution channel, if you want to reach a lot of people, we're no longer in this stage where you can just deploy a new app and then people are going to come and download your app feverishly like, you know, piranhas. Like, oh yes, that, what a cool app. Let's all go there. Like, that doesn't happen. You can't simply publish your app to the app store and expect that everyone's going to go and download it. And from that regard, yes, I completely agree with Patrick Shu that, that that's the case. You can't just deploy an app and then expect people to find it. Uh, because, because the market is so saturated and there are so many apps and so many users. Having said that, that doesn't mean that there aren't unmet market needs in specific niches that you can find, that you can define for yourself and you can go and serve people. I mean, people still have problems. And what you want to do is solve those problems. Um, another YouTuber, Tech Alter, talked about how um, apps need to be found, downloaded, and installed. And that's a big part of the, the, the pain of the app experience. That you have to go and you have to find the apps, you have to download them, you have to install them. And those are all barriers. If you're the app developer, those are all barriers to people adopting your app. Because how are they going to find you? And then they have to download and install you. And then they have to learn how to use your app. So he talked about specifically chatbots replacing apps. And he cited examples like Skyscanner or Facebook, where these are apps that have chat bots that reach out and engage uh, you as the user. And so let's focus on that concept of reaching out and engage, because that's really what we're saying. And that's what chat bots do. Chat bots reach out and engage people. Saying that chat bots will replace apps is kind of like saying, will waiters replace lasagna? I mean, uh, waiter, the waiter brings you the food, and then you eat the food, right? And and chatbots, what they really are about is engaging people to bring them to a certain place to have them experience something. And typically that means that we're using a chatbot to say, for sales and marketing, right? To say, hey, come over here. Come into this app. Come to this website. Come buy on this shop. Uh, and so the, the messenger, the chatbot, is really the way to basically do marketing and sales, to bring people to uh, a certain experience. The same way that the waiter is really, you know, coming to us to say, what would you like? And then bringing us the food. So he's preparing an experience for us to enjoy. Now, is there truly a reduction in the interest or in the use of apps downloaded from the app store? So I found this really insightful article from businessofapps.com about app statistics. Uh, and uh, here's an excerpt. The market for these apps is about as big as they come. It is estimated that the global number of smartphone users will rise to 3.5 billion over the course of 2020. If we looked at it in terms of devices, there are more connected mobile devices in the world, that's 7.94 billion, than there are people, which is just about 7.8 billion people in the world. These devices are approaching ubiquity in advanced economies, among which med median penetration levels stand at 76% of adults. In South Korea, a stunning 95% of adults own a smartphone. Okay, so we can see that in certain countries, pretty much everybody has a smartphone. 
not and and sorry is there going to be an increase in smartphone users and can then we then draw meaningful conclusions about uh, an increase in app users so in countries like south korea that probably won't happen because uh because everyone already has a smartphone but there are emerging economies that are catching up like brazil and south africa that already log penetration levels of 60%, while India's lower figure of 24% still represents hundreds of millions of users. So there are lots of people with smartphones that are using apps, but in some countries, there still are a lot more people uh, that are not using smartphones yet. So I found some data on app store downloads by quarter, and this data comes from Sensor Towers uh, 2020 um, Digital Digest. So if you look, you can see that in the dark blue, we've got the Google Play Store app downloads, and then also the light blue is the iOS app store. And you can see that there's actually a pretty steady increase until uh, the very, very end of uh, Q4 2019. And then right when the pandemic hits, we have this sudden uptick in Google, uh, in Google Play app downloads. Even if you look at just the iOS data though, we're going from about 5 billion downloads per quarter to about 9 billion downloads per quarter. So over time, there actually has been an increase uh, in interest. And especially in 2020, not just like a steady increase, but a, a spike upwards. So I don't think that we can say that there's been, uh, or that there is a decreasing interest in apps because clearly uh, people are going to these channels and downloading apps from Google and from, and from Apple. I did find this article by a customer strategist uh, about what to expect from the rise of chatbots. And um, honestly, I was a little bit disappointed in this article. There, you know, there are some interesting points to consider, but there's no data to really back it up. So for example, looking at statements like, studies show that consumers are experiencing mobile app fatigue. They're just not that into them anymore with a few exceptions. One of these exceptions is mobile messaging apps. So. I mean, they're interesting statements. Uh, studies show that consumers are experiencing mobile app fatigue, but what studies are we talking about? Like there are no references, there are no citations, there are no data that are mentioned here. And so it's hard for me to take this, uh, this assertion for what, you know, for what it says at face value, especially while looking at the data that we just saw that there actually is an increase in mobile app downloads. In fact, going over to Sensor Tower and downloading their full report, uh, they say specifically that worldwide app downloads reached an all-time high of 37.8 billion in second quarter of 2020. And that's an increase of 31.7% year over year. So over the same quarter of the previous year. So you can see here that overall, there's been that 31.7% increase from a year over year from the second quarter of the previous year. And then also you can see that uh, iOS, like Apple App Store downloads have increased by 22% over the same period year over year. over year. And then also there's been a 34.9% increase of Google Play downloads year over year. So the data simply just don't show that there really is truly a, some kind of app fatigue. That's just not happening. Now, if you want to look at the overall apps that are downloaded worldwide, the number one app in 2020, obviously, is going to be Zoom, right? Everyone is stuck at home in the pandemic trying to connect with others. And so Zoom suddenly, you know, raced to the top and it's the top download. You got TikTok, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Messenger. Now notice, especially if we're talking about chatbots, that a lot of the top apps that are downloaded are Messenger apps. So Facebook Messenger, Instagram also has messaging features. WhatsApp is a Messenger app. Telegram, for example, also a messenger app. So it is safe to say that in terms of finding a way to reach out to an audience, chatbots are great because, uh, because people are using messenger apps and they respond to messages in messenger apps. And so chatbots can be a great way to reach out to them, but it doesn't mean that people are not downloading apps anymore. Now we looked at the sensor tower data for the top apps that were downloaded, but what about app categories? Uh, if you took all of the apps that people are downloading and categorized them, uh, basically the top category is games, right? So that has nothing to do with a messenger app or social media. The next category, photos and video. After that, entertainment. After that, utilities and then shopping. And in fact, in the Apple App Store, uh, shopping actually took the fifth place and bumped messenger apps or social media apps down one. Shopping passed social networking to enter the top five off of about 40% year over year growth. So, so the messenger apps are not even like the top category of app downloads. If you look at Google Play, similar. We've got games as the number one category, then tools, then entertainment, then, then social. So social actually has a higher, st higher placement in terms of app categories for Google Play. Uh, and then video players. Now looking at data on which countries have the highest app downloads, the top country for downloading apps is actually India. But remember what we said earlier though about India mobile device usage? 
India still has like about a 24, 25% mobile device adoption rate. And so there's still a, a lot of people in India that don't have mobile devices yet. And so there is still a lot of room for growth uh, uh, because we don't have a saturated market in terms of mobile devices. App store categories by growth. Uh, the business category growing a lot. Education, health and fitness, news. These are the categories that are really thriving. Um, if you look at the categories that are diminishing, that are, that are sh shrinking, we've got travel, sports and navigation. So people are going to travel uh, apps less, uh, they're going to sports apps less, uh, and to navigation apps less. And so, especially if we're talking about travel, that's one area where chatbots are, are replacing a lot of app uh, features because like we said about the Skyscanner application, you know, you, you can just chat with a Skyscanner chatbot and they can, you know, it can, it can book your tickets for you. So um, I think there is an opportunity for chatbots to disrupt certain areas of app development, but app development and app downloads, app adoption and usage is not decreasing. It is actually increasing. Another thing to consider is the definition of the term apps. You could say uh, that app means specifically something that is downloaded from an app store, but you can also use the word apps to refer to progressive web applications or apps like that. So a web app is not the same thing as a mobile app. You also can consider that apps are just kind of one aspect of a business model, right? So you can have an app that's like the storefront, but you still have all of the back office stuff that needs to happen. Like there are so many applications for technology. And if you take the word app, and if you broaden it to mean basically a piece of software that solves a problem for someone, um, the, the term apps can be applied more broadly than just things that are downloaded from the app store. So to summarize, if you are looking for the App Store or Google Play to distribute your app and, and then have you know millions of people find it and you're gonna go totally viral, that's not gonna happen by itself. If you want to reach people, uh, yes, you might wanna go with chatbots to draw them into your application. But if you have to create an app in order to uh, satisfy a, a user need, go for it. Apps are not dead. All right, thanks for watching and thanks for the question. We'll see you next time here on Swattage, the software innovation lab. Join us again. Videos are published every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 12 noon Mountain Time.